Hello, and welcome to God's Friends. I'm Gary Gaither. And I'm Sue Gaither. Welcome. Well, Sue, this is broadcast number two. We, uh, we, uh, we're we on nearly for 10 years, a uh, half an hour program, and then we took a couple years off, and then we moved to Cuenca, Ecuador for oh my goodness. five and a half years, and maybe we'll tell a couple of Ecuador stories from time to time. And now we're back. Uh, we're record, recording this time in Asheville, North Carolina. It'll be streamed and it will be available. Uh, we'll send out an email to friends in, in Cuenca so they can listen as, as well. Uh, we're excited. And so maybe uh, we'll start with a little quickie review. Yes. Last week or last broadcast, we were talking about what is God's friends uh, because we did air 10 years and we wanted people to understand why we were on the radio, and and you shared that, and we were casting a vision for our NOW program. Why are we back on the radio, Gary? We want to share uh, what God has really taught us in these years that we've lived, and uh, especially the last seven years since we've been absent from the radio. And actually, a lot of things are not necessarily new, but just have grown deeper in our heart, the reality of Christ. And we want to encourage our listener. If ever there was a day that people need to be encouraged, today's the day, and that is the passion of our heart. You know, listener, think about your life seven years ago and what has happened in your life in, in the U.S., in, in Latin America, in the world, you know, socially, politically, uh, spiritually, it's amazing the acceleration of the rate of change. But the one thing never changes, the love of God. And Sue, I love you more than I did seven years ago, and I love my Lord more than I did seven years ago. And this message of intimacy with God, this message that we will quote David and Paul and Peter and, and John and Jeremiah and others, this message uh, has been the same for thousands of years. And it's the message that God loves you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness he calls you. Now, sometimes loving kindness may not look like loving kindness, but from God's perspective and, and for us, when we, when we get into that eternal perspective, we will understand sometimes the hand of love seems harsh uh, in certain seasons. But we are here to express the love of God uh, and to be God's friends, as, as Jesus said uh, in John 15 in, in the Last Supper. He said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends, God's and, friends. Yes, For all it, things the Father has made known to me, I have made known to you. That is still the will of the Savior. He still wants to passionately to reveal himself to us. And if and a listener, a, a little homework assignment might be, read John 17 and see what Jesus says about his message and how it is to be carried on even to us in this age. His prayer, that high priestly prayer that that whole chapter is, is so powerful and, and eternal, John chapter 17. Yes, and uh, one of the smashing points that we made last broadcast is out of John 17, John 17, 3, what Jesus prayed. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you, Father, the only true God, in Jesus Christ whom you've sent. And the other thing you just said about the great love of God that has not changed, the apostles understood his intense love, and even by the Holy Spirit, through them, men of old, the Bible that was put together, the scriptures were given to us. And here's one of those beautiful scriptures found in Ephesians 3. And he said, Paul pen this by the Spirit of God, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend, to understand with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth 
and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. And I want to say all knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power, the who is at work within us is able to, able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we all put together could ever ask or imagine. And to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And then we talked about, you know, what is a God's friend? And I said, well, praise the Lord. It's more than being God's friends. It's being a child of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood through what Christ did for us. And um, we talked about, you know, you, you mentioned how much God passionately loves us. And we proved it by the scriptures um, that... In Ephesians 2, he says that God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so you we talked about how you know that being a, a child of God and and right now I want to ask that question, okay, how do you become who is a, a child of God through Christ Jesus? And I used to think that it was the difference between being bad or good until I read the Bible, <laughs> really read the Bible. And God doesn't define it that way. I just read it. The, the difference between being a child of God or an unbeliever and a believer is the difference between being dead and alive. Um, dead is dead in our, I just read it in Ephesians 2, dead in our trespasses and sins. And to be alive forevermore, remember he said eternal life is given through his son, Jesus, he gives you eternal life. Which is not ha- something that happens when we die. Eternal life starts as soon as we know him. As soon as he Invite comes to dwell in, in, our life. in you by the Spirit of God, eternal life starts now. That is so powerful and exciting. So it's kind of like, well, I once was a cat, but now I'm a dog. And you know how dramatic that is if you... <laughs> you know, we're a cat and now you're a dog, well, your species changed. Well, the same thing with us. Once I was dead in my sins, I had no hope. And we played the song Redeemer. You know, you saw me in my sin. You saw me in my eternal death. And now you're my Redeemer. You have given me your life, Lord. And, and that's the difference. And then as a Christian, I begin, see, I really begin to discover Christ in me, um, the hope of glory, the hope of fruitfulness, and the hope of living on this planet in the face of so many different things. So those were the things that we touched or began to touch on in our last broadcast. And now we we want to continue this in this broadcast and the ones coming in the future. So we're casting the vision of all the things we're going to talk about. Are you telling me Christianity is not about self-improvement? Well, no. <laughs> it's about, like you love to say, self-replacement. Replacement of what? But it's not a what, it's a who. And, and here it is in the Scripture. I've, okay. Here's another one of my favorites, Colossians chapter 3, the opening four verses. Paul's letter to Christians at Colossae. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, listener, you and me, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth, for you have died. Uh, Yes, the old self, the old, the cat is dead. Um, for you have died, and your life is hidden 
with Christ in God. Now the clincher. When Christ, who is our life, Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. And of course, that appears to be speaking of the revelation of Christ at his second coming. But it also ref- refers to, um, to our daily life, that Christ is, is our life. So it's not about him getting to be the shiny specimen of Christianity that's better than everybody else. It's about allowing Christ to express his life through us. Listener, it is not, as often as you may have had this impression, I know I did too, is it is not about you working up a sweat to be a great person. You don't, you don't lie and you don't steal and you don't chew or run with girls that do. That's, that's not it. It is about a new life. It is about Christ who is our life, expressing his life, which is love, which is peace, which is joy through us. And I, I know when I have bad days and bad moments, like everybody else, but I can always step back and go, there's a little too much Gary going on and not enough abiding in Christ and allowing his life to come through me. And I know that's a difficult thing to, to grasp. It is, it has, in a way, it has to be a personal revelation as you walk more and more deeply with him. Uh, I know uh, many, if not most, of the listeners have been offended by Christianity, uh, have been offended by perhaps well-meaning but uh, immature Christians uh, saying you ought to do this and why haven't you done this that and and you're not a good person and you need to you need to do what what I do and and that is not Christianity. Christianity is a living relationship with someone who is who is passionately calling us to enter into a daily hourly relationship with the, with a risen Savior who is in love with us. He not only loves us, he's in love with us as individuals. And so often in the busyness of Christianity and all the programs and projects and things we want to do, many of which are wonderful, we, we, we lose that. And we lose that, 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 that warm, loving relationship that he wants to have with us. You know, when I, I was a, a pastor for a couple of years in Ecuador, uh, uh, I wasn't trained as a seminary pastor, but God called me into pastoral work in the city of Cuenca. And Sue was our worship leader. Uh, and, and I used to say, you don't do things for Christ. You do things from Christ, as you've said, Sue. Uh, we do things from his indwelling person out of relationship without him, with him, out of a yieldedness to, to him. And it's not about me. It's not about me being better. There are some things I struggle with today, listener, that I've been struggling with my entire life. Now, hopefully it's improved, but my goal is not to be this perfect specimen of Christianity. My goal is to, is to step out of the way and out of that love relationship with the God uh, by his spirit, express the love of Christ, and that people will see Christ in me. And, and I know those times when, when I really felt like I had an impact on other people. I always know it wasn't me because I felt the presence and power of the Spirit of God flowing through me. Sometimes when I bring a message, I would get so choked up I could hardly speak because it wasn't me. It was this powerful love throwing, flowing through me from God, from those, those people he had, he had given us and, and brought together. So, listener, please... This is not about performance. This is not performance-based Christianity. This is not about building your encyclopedia of knowledge. Yes, it's important to know the Bible. Yes, it's important to read his love letter to us and to understand his program, which is diametrically the opposite of the world's program. And it's Paul wrote in Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is so important. But at the same time, What's most important is maintaining that relationship. You know, I've known people that could quote the Bible upside down, backwards, forwards, and sideways, and yet somehow the love of God was not evident in them. Uh, So... uh, we, it, I'm not. We're, Sue and I are not here as as God's friends, speaking to other friends of God to improve you. We're here to draw you into vital relationship, deeper and deeper with Jesus Christ.
But we are cheerleaders. <laughs> We're going to say, I know somebody who can do it in you. And I, I, it says here in Galatians, when you were saying all that, I was thinking about this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law? And another way um, you, you could put that, did you receive God's Holy Spirit by something you did or how well you thought you did good for God or by believing what you heard. And, and what did they hear? They heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What did he do? And it's about what he did and what he's doing in you and me. And he's always doing that. And, and, that, and what he's done, and that's a finished work, which I praise God for. And see, that's something I had to come and grasp and understand and I just read in Ephesians 3, it says, by the power of the Spirit in you, He will cause you, He will enable you to grasp and comprehend with all the saints the length and the breadth and the height and the depth and to know this love. But it's more than knowing His love. It's also knowing how to walk in Him and through Him and Him and us and all the things you were saying. So anytime I ever heard something, it just sounded like Greek to me. I could either struggle with it and try to figure it out or do what he said, come to me. The Lord says that to us. Come to me and trust me to unveil it to you. Trust me to work it out in you and where you personally understand what I've done in the cross and what it means to have me, the Lord Jesus, dwelling in you. Yes, little old you, <laughs> because that's the way I've always felt about myself. I'm not anybody special or grandiose, but I used to say that to God. I said, Lord, it's just little old me, and I've I want to know this for me, for my understanding. Why? Because I know when I really, really know the Lord and He, and I'm rejoicing over His work in me, guess what? I can then turn around and really, truly, genuinely, sincerely um, encourage someone else. And then Paul wrote, he said, are you so foolish? This is Galatians 3 again. Having started, with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Meaning, are you going to make yourself perfect? I don't think so. I don't know anybody. If somebody claims, well, I just worked so hard, I made myself perfect. You know, I don't know where they got that from because I don't know anybody that would claim that. But the perfect one as a believer lives in you. Jesus is perfect. And not only is he perfect, his life is perfect. There's no death in his life in you. And his love is perfect. First John, one of our favorite letters in the Bible, perfect love cast out fear. And this is the good news. The good news, and I love it, Colossians 1.27, if you have received Jesus Christ into your being, your heart. Christ is in you. He is your hope of glory. He is your hope of fruit. Every day, all day, each day, every time you wake up, I love to think about how, thank you, God, for teaching me that I'm bankrupt, but you're not, and you're now my new source. You're my, my new bank. You know, you're my personal banker. <laughs> yeah, that, that Colossians 1, I love, you mentioned I love that. It, it, it's called the mystery of the gospel. Gee, what's, what's the mystery of the gospel? Uh, in the New Testament, word mystery means something has been hidden that is now revealed. It's not, it doesn't remain a mystery. It's, it's something hidden that God wants to reveal clearly to you. And, and here it is. Uh, that is the mystery which has been hidden from past ages and generations, 
but has now been revealed, has been manifested to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then he goes on and says, we proclaim him, Christ, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present them Every man complete in Christ. And he finally, he closes the chapter by saying, For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. Whose power? His power. His. The mystery, Christ in us. And we want to emphasize this because so often... uh, Throughout our, our life and ministry, we meet people that are Christians that are so unhappy. They're, they're, they're frustrated. They're angry. They're mad at themselves because they're not performing better. And I just want to stop and say, what is the mystery of the gospel? It's Christ in you. The Colossians thing, when Christ, who is our life, appears, you know, we'll, we'll be like him because he lives in us. So, listener, take heart. It's not about your performance. It's about you're allowing him to f- perform through you. It's, it's about allowing his love to grow in you. And then out of that, yes, we will become better people. Yeah. But th- 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 again, that's, that's the result. That's yeah. not the cause. It's oh, so yeah. easy to get those backwards because all of society is, is performance oriented. You've got to do this and you need this. And, and the gospel is, is, is the opposite of all that the world puts in us or tries to put in us. Uh, uh, I give a quote here. I believe this was Martin Luther. And he said, only Christ can live the Christian life. That means I probably can't. But Christ in me can. That, that is our emphasis as, as God's friends. Um, another scripture says, cease striving and know that I am God. So it's really about knowing rather than striving. And as we, as we come to know and come to know more than intellectually but on an experiential basis, uh, we come to know Christ, we come to express Christ, and it's not striving. I find when I get myself in a, in a striving situation, it's me and not him. Um, the Lord's not, not in a hurry to achieve something in me. He is very much interested in the process uh, each day rather than have, hurrying to a result. And, and the obedience of Scripture is called the obedience of faith, having that, that faith that drives everything else, not performance-based, but relationship-based. Well, I guess since this is our second broadcast, if uh, someone's listening for the second time, you, you may have figured out that our primary gifting right now is exhortation. And we, we love those who teach the Word, and you and I listen to a number of teachers throughout the years, and and we we do, and our broadcast will express, sometimes we'll take, you know, some scripture and then teach it. But right now, uh, getting started, we're, we're really exhorting um, that we're which another word for exhortation is just simply encouraging, deeply encouraging. And I, I think maybe we've spoken to someone who may not have ever placed their faith in Christ. And yet the bulk of what we've shared so far on these two broadcasts have been to the believer, the one who is in Christ. Because I've lived long enough to see um, multifaceted, living, where I've seen, I've been in different situations, different churches around many people. You have two, Gary, and I, both of us together. And I understand the problems and the struggles that people go through. And I, I do, uh, we do have an adversary, the devil, and his favorite job or his job description is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You will not find that as God's dis, uh, job description. Hmm. He, no. Jesus said, here's my job description. I came to give life and life 
more abundantly. And then you find that through um, after he ascended and he used the apostles to pin the scriptures, uh, the new covenant in his blood, and all of the riches that have happened as a result of his sacrificial death and resurrection on our behalf, all you find is life, 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 good, 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 fruit, 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 eternal life, eternal riches, eternal kindness, eternal mercy. You will not find, I'm here to kill you, I'm here to destroy you, you will not find that in the scriptures. And not only that, but when the Spirit of God comes to dwell in our hearts, praise the Lord, His job description is to persuade the heart of the truth, the truth that sets people free and and shows us who Christ really is. And, and, and our job as vessels of His is to be that, give me a J, give me, a, you know, the cheerleader, the the. The one that's yelling in the, the, you know, in the balcony of your life. Can you hear us right now? We're, we're cheering you on, child of God, believer, and say, yes, it is God's will for all of us to know him, to really know him and to know his son and his spirit dwelling in your heart and my heart. And so we get excited about it. I can't help it because, you know. <laughs> I, I do want to give our uh, our email. Any of us you would like to email us, you have a question or a comment, uh, one of our emails is Thriving in Ecuador. That's the name of a book we wrote about Ecuador. But the email is Thriving in Ecuador at gmail.com. gmail.com. Sue's devotional blog is found at? Uh, it's Spirit ears.blogspot.com spirit ears with a s at the end of ear uh, dot blogspot.com i write devotions every week if you want a little information about ecuador this is a travel based blog uh, that, that we've written and uh, again it's a blogspot which is a which is a, a blog generator and it is uh, it is the gaithers that's our last name the gaithers plural at, excuse me, dot blogspot dot com. That's the website for Ecuador Travels. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. Give us ears to hear and a heart to respond to your wonderful love. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. Thank you for joining us today. And if you'd like to contact us for a question, prayer, or whatever, um, please do so at our email address, Gary and Sue Gaither at gmail.com. That's Gary and Sue Gaither at gmail.com. Hey, and thank you for joining us next week on this same station, same time. Gary and Sue Gaither, God's friends. <laughs>